but in this video I'm going to show you, you know, pretty much the solid bags and, and how effective they can be at any time of the year. Now you join me on Turner's Lake at the Norton Disney Complex. Now in here holds many, many carp around the 900 mark. So yeah, plenty of carp to go at and plenty of biggers. You know, they probably go close at this time of the year to mid 40s. I had one a few weeks ago, one of the big girls at 39 pounds. So it'd be lovely to see if we can top that. But in this video, I'm gonna show you, you know, pretty much the solid bags and, and how effective they can be at any time of the year, you know, especially what I'd say during the spring time when you know there's not a lot of stuff on the bottom and your solid bag will stand out very very well and be a bit of a sort of a cherry on the cake amongst all that free offerings that you put out there and Turner's Lake as a whole is you know there's not many massive plateaus or bars you're creating the spot and we're doing that through bait and we're doing that through our solid bag so I've already introduced about 12 spawns of hybrid boilies a little bit of hemp and mainly sweet corn. Again, that's gonna stand out on the bottom and create that area rather than there be a massive spot out there that we're fishing to. And over that, like I mentioned, our little solid bags. And um, yeah, I'm gonna start off with three different color hook baits. I'll try a little isotonic one. I've got some little white squid ones, some naughty little white squid ones, and my probably go-to one, the old pink ones, which again are on squid. So I'm gonna knock a couple of bags up, get them over that baited area, and fingers crossed time. As you can probably see, we've got a horrible crosswind and you know, casting solid bags out in a crosswind is painful because you're gonna get an extent of bow in your line and you know, when you're trying to mend that bow, that is when you're gonna possibly every time move that lead. When you move that lead out of that solid bag, you're not fishing a solid bag, you know, you're fishing a single hook bait, you can easily pull your, your hook into some weed, you can blunt it, but more importantly, you know, you're not fishing that little pile of bait around your hook bait. Um, I didn't hit the clip absolutely perfect for when fishing in a crosswind. You know, you really want to sort of like hit that clip with force. That way all that bow in the line almost goes straight, you know? And when you're sort of trying to mend the bow in your line, never force it, you know? You've got to almost let the bow do its thing and the line will sink where it wants to sink. But once you've sunk your line, then you're in control, you know? And then you can start mending your line and getting that perfect tram line. waiting for my opportunity with the wind you know all that gusty wind is going to put more bow into the line you'll notice you know we're trained to sort of when you're feeling the lead down you know to bring the rod back up and feel it down but the more line i've got in the air the more bow i'm also going to get in my line so instead of hitting the clip with my rod in the air i'm going to hit the clip with my rod tip very very close to the water getting all that sort of line sort of you know on the water surface rather than in the air floating around in this horrible crosswind so Let's put practice into perfect, eh? Probably crack off now. <laughs> That's, that feels nice. Nice. Much better, much better. All that bow is at the line. Feel that lead down. Now we're fishing. Now we're fishing. Just really hit that clip hard, you know? That bag pretty weighs. I've got three and a half ounce lead in it a good ounce and a half of pellet probably, so five ounces. So when you hit the clip, it doesn't bounce back. It sort of really pulls that line nice and straight. 
Line lay is super, super important, especially when you've got three in a spot. Now the videographer just pointed out, how comes your bags are, you know, fairly small? And they are, I guess, you know, this is a small bag and I'm only filling it up halfway. And the reason for it, I want to catch them, not feed them, you know? And, um, you know, let's put this into, into context. If I was fishing a meshy bag, which I do like a meshy bag at times, I wouldn't use a meshy bag the size of a cricket ball. You know, again, I want, I want a nice little small one. Um, and again with this, you know, the more pellet around the hook bait, you know, the more chance they've got of nicking a mouthful of pellet, doing the off, and maybe not coming back again. So if I can get the smallest bag possible, you know, to the point where it's like a mouthful, two mouthfuls, I've got a very good chance of uh, catching that carp rather than eating my freebies and uh, doing the off. So yeah, that's the main reason for using half a small bag as such. And they cast extremely effectively as well. And you probably noticed I've whittled down one of my um, pastel barrel wafters. These are, when I say drenched, I mean drenched in squid goo. Love the goo, as you can probably tell, it's uh, on almost every single hook bait that I put in a solid bag, even my fake corn as well. I put little good bits of goo in it. Um, but yeah, why do I whittle them down? Why not? You know, there's no scientific proof that, you know, they're not going to come along and eat that one there more than they will my whittle down one. So it's just something I've always done and um, yeah, and always will do, but it doesn't get me any extra bites. It's just something I do, I guess. <laughs> Great for habit. Creature of habit, yeah, it's just one day I'll get lazy and just put one on and get a bite and probably never whittle them down again. But, but it's the important factor to take out of that is, you know, the small hook baits. You know, I'm feeding very, very, very small pellet. Sometimes, um, just I've got some lovely ones I'll show you later on, some real match the hatch, so real brown or sort of like real off brown hook baits and whittle them down to sort of like eight mil. And, um, you know, you're trying to imitate as best possible the, the pellet or the, or the feed you're feeding. You know, I've got whole boilies and corn in my mix. Sometimes I'll just fish a single grain of corn. Use that a lot in solid bags. Um, be on this occasion, I fancy a couple of wafters on the bottom and that is my go-to rig once I've got a little hair stop in place. Now I've got two rods absolutely plumb on the bait, which gives me you know, a nice bit of room to the left to slot this one here down the middle. Now I'm not making excuses, if it goes a rod length off the bait, I'm quite happy with that. If you've uh, watched my masterclass yet, at Linear, that big and that 37 pounder I had on the solid bag, that went about two rod lengths to the right hand side of the spot. And I was a bit like, oh, let's give it a couple of hours and add a big one, you know. The big ones often come just off the, off the baited area. You know, the little, little ones that get on the bait, you know, you'll carve up a few of them and the big ones will just hold back. So I'm not making an excuse, but it goes a little bit left. I will be leaving it, and if I catch a big one, it was all part of the plan. <laughs> Let's get it out of there. That wind's just nice now. Whew, if I had a bait boat, that's where I'd have put it. Live in the dream. First time unraveling a club cart box. Very neatly done, I must say. And first, you are greeted with the card and looking very good, but more importantly, the details within the card. Now, if we look on the reverse, this gives you a real good instructional view of how I tie, you know, the rig that goes in the solid bag and the knotless knot, the whipping knot all the little figure of eight loop knots so you can loop on and loop off and make it a very effective and quick change PVA bag rig. But yeah, very nicely done. 
lovely um, B1 fully scaled on there as well. Let's have a little look at the contents. Oh, most important bit of all. On Masterclass 9, what a pleasure that was filming that and being on the front cover as well. Farlows and Linear B1. Perfect venues for solid bag. Now let's have a little quick look. What we got here. Now the all important size six crank. Now I use these an awful lot in bags along with little size eight long shank hooks. Um, yeah, rarely get a hook pull on them. Just a perfect short shanked little solid bag rig. Trick tubing, super important. Just to sort of open up the gape of that curve at crank hook. Size eight swivel. They plug nicely into my leads. Super important. The old solid bags. Now, I mentioned earlier on why I use small. You know, I want to catch them, not feed them. And I only fill up half of one of these. So using a medium or a large, to me, I don't see as effective as a small solid bag. So yeah, for casting purposes and catching them, not feeding them, get on the small ones. Now, mainly main line of kindly put together the exact little um, spot and PVA pellet mix. The perfect mix, you know, mixed size pellets. You don't want big food items in the bag. You know, you don't want sort of whole 12 and 14 mil bodies just because, you know, you're gonna create voids and air pockets within that bag. You're never gonna get them tight. They're never gonna cast as accurate. And more importantly, they're never gonna get to the bottom as quickly and efficiently as they will with small food items in the bag. So keep them small and your bag will come out even better. Now, one of the most important factors is your hook link material. Now, you want a supple braid. 18 pound Supernatural is, in my opinion, the perfect braid for the rig. And as it had mentioned in the rig description, about four inches for your bag rig. And that's what we got. A little bit of fake corn. As I mentioned, you can't go wrong with fake corn. And if you want to keep your head warm while you're hauling, pop your beanie on and you'll be catching plenty of carp, hopefully, through the night. So everything in this little box is exactly what I use for tying up my little solid bag rigs. And you'll be good to go. Well, good morning. Nothing to report, unfortunately. Absolute checkbook and pen, but um, yeah, that's fishing. We'll soon get over it and go and find them elsewhere. The beauty of not Disney is, you know, there's five lakes here, and um, they're all absolutely ram of carp. But this one here at the minute doesn't seem to want to play ball. You know, there's literally no other anglers on here at the minute. Not a single other angler. So, you know, it never helps. Uh, you, need, you need anglers to push the fish around, and they're probably just backed off me a little bit. But I'm not gonna make excuses when I go and find them elsewhere. And, you know, there's plenty of carp and hodgets. I'm sure we can go and catch several today, but the fishing billies are, they are special, special carp. And you know, it's been fishing well. I wanted to be on there yesterday, but the wind was just, you know, you, you couldn't hear me speak. So, you know, it's a very good day lake. So we're gonna drag these in. The gate's open at eight o'clock. We can get round there, get some rods out. And uh, I reckon there's a very, very good chance. But here, just feels a bit stale today. A few more anglers on it, a few more leads pushing them around. You know, we might have a chance, but um, yeah, we'll get on the barrel and go and catch them, eh?
Right, so we've moved from Turner's on to Billy's Lake. Now, Billy's is a little bit larger than Turner's, about 27 acres here. But in that 27 acres, trust me, are some really, really nice carp. Probably my favourite carp on the complex, you know, real scaly, some lovely shape to them, and um, a very, very dark fish as well. Unfortunately, Billy's hasn't had, which surprised me quite a bit, the best winter form this winter. Um, but in the past few days, if I'm honest, there's been a few fish coming out. Um, still a little bit hit and miss, but it is well worth coming on, braving the wind, see if we can get amongst um, yeah, some of these fish. And it's a very good day lake, you know. If, if, if you're gonna catch them, it is during the day. I've noticed it between sort of like 11 a.m. through till dark is like peak time. You know, that is your best opportunity of a bite. Um, so yeah, we're gonna grab that opportunity and go for it. I've already introduced six or seven very accurate spoms um, out in the pond. I'm going to fish free, solid bags, just like Turner's, over the top. And hopefully these ones here are a bit more obliging. Turner's hasn't got the best daytime form. It's more, it's more late evenings, you know, and through the night. So you can hear the wind already. She is howling, which can make fishing on billies extremely hard. And that's one of the reasons why I've come over to this room here, because um, you know, the wind's in the back of me, so it's not gonna affect me. So hopefully we can get three rods absolutely plumb out there. And hopefully we can get amongst some of these lovely dark scaly fish that I keep talking about. God, that wind really is getting up today. She's a nice bag, that one. We, let's get her out there. Mate, I think I've got a guy, I think I've got a bite. I've got a, yep, it might be a coot, but it might be a fish. No, I think we've got a fish. Yeah, if you, I can sort, yeah, if you can sort them out, mate, that'd be brilliant. Sweet, okay, mate, I'll leave you in peace. No worries, buddy. Take it easy, mate. I knew, mate, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Ah, it's all going off. Got one. <laughs> Go fishing, they said. The weather is absolutely brutal, but I did tell them it might be an opportunity today, and we've definitely got ourselves one. <laughs> Solid bags, if you can get them on the money. There's definitely bites to be had, and uh, it's been graft. Bloody hard bite this morning. Kited a hell of a long way left into the deeper water, which is always a good sign. Let's 
whoever is mental. To be fair, I actually live for moments like this. Is like brings me back to uh, childhood memories at Horseshoe, just getting smashed by big storms. Yeah, man. Oh, work, but good fun. Come on, go. It's put up a bloody good account of itself. Absolute savage weather. It's changed from a southwesterly to a northwesterly in a space of about a minute. This is madness. Oh, I've got another one as well, we're right in one in there, look, double take. We're holding now, mate. <laughs> it's all going off. Double bubble. Wow, this weather has definitely got them going. Get this one in, hopefully. It's a nice fish too. Lovely carp. do. Come on, Gil. Uh. We've got one more now. It's all going off. Let's get this one here. Ah, uh, he's off. It's always a barbless looks, I guess. That's a shame. Oh well, we've still got one out there. Ooh. This is ridiculous, isn't it? Savage weather. Yeah. One of them. Well, we've got one in the net, but unfortunately, that wind has changed from a southwesterly, which is blowing behind us, to a what's this? A west northwest. Horrible crosswind, and I'm fishing out there just over 100 yards. And uh, even though I can still hit a solid bag out there that far, you know the amount of bow in my line, and me trying to sort of mend that bow. I'm pretty sure I'm going to be moving leads up the solid bag, so while it's absolutely brutal, I'm just going to go over to some little normal little wafter rigs um, without a meshy bag or a bag at all, and um, just so I'm out there fishing. And as soon as it dies back down again, we can get our bags back out there, but you've got to know when to choose your battles, you know, and um, yeah, Mother Nature today is going to beat me on the bag front, but it won't on a rig front. Um, so yeah, George had to nip back to turn his leg to grab a little bit more kit and while he was gone I managed to nick another one which was nice and then managed to lose one which is not so nice so but yeah, that's all part of the fun I guess. Um, but yeah, getting solid bags out in this weather is just going to frustrate the hell out of me so I'm going to put on little rigs and get back out there super accurate. Um, baiting up is also going to be a bit of a pain. Um, so yeah, the next couple of hours might be a little bit of a, a lull spell, you know, because I've got no bait out there. I'm not fishing how I want to fish, but I am fishing. But the weather's going to change, you know. This evening, come about six o'clock, it's going to swing back round to a southwesterly, which makes my life a lot easier. I can get bags back out there perfectly, and I can accurately bait over the top as well. Um, sometimes you just got to let the wind and Mother Nature do her thing, rather than bait everywhere, potentially crack off, not get the line lay you want to get, not hit the spot that you want to hit. You know, sometimes you just got to sit back and go, fair enough, you can have a couple of hours out of me. But then when it is my time again, I reckon about five o'clock, I'm going to get another load more bait out there. I'm going to get them solid bags back out there. And tonight, I reckon it'll go off. Well, they couldn't have gone too much better. Having to hit the clip super hard, you know, to um, take all that bow out the line. 
but they are absolutely on the money to be fair to them. I wish I had a little bit of bait. I will try and get some bait out there in a minute, but I do like to fish super accurate. And, um, oh mate, look at that. She beautiful. Yeah, we're fishing and we're fishing decent. So that's good. That's nice. I'll cut the fish to have a look at. And then, yeah, hopefully the wind will die and we can really get our teeth into it. And there we go, our efforts definitely got rewarded and that move was definitely worthwhile, you know. Uh, I sort of get a, a sick feeling when I know I'm sort of on them and when I'm not, I didn't feel like uh, I was fishing this morning. So yeah, the quick move. And we've got two lovely fish to show you, this being the first one. And uh, a nice 20 pounder, I'm not gonna tell you the exact weight just yet because we're running a little competition. But yeah, on the solid bag, over the bait, you know, it's hard work in the wind, getting them bang on, but if you persevere, like I mentioned, you get rewarded, and everything that you've got in your box is how I caught this carp, you know, the supernatural braid, the little crank hooks, all them little components has helped get me this lovely 20 pounder. Well, fish number two, again on the old solid bags, but unfortunately that wind got up, didn't it, and uh, put a halt to them. So I've had to go to normal little fishing rigs and I've not had a bite since. It just goes to show you how effective the old solid bag can be. You know, I honestly believe you get three or four more bites on bags than you do to sort of conventional uh, little wafter or pop-up rigs. But hopefully that wind will die down soon. In the meantime, I'm gonna get a few rigs prepped, but when it does, hopefully the hauling will continue.
action, mate. That is all she wrote. No more action, but plenty of fun on the left. Yesterday was good fun, you know. Two very quick bites on solid bags. And that shows you how effective they really can be. So all them components in your subscription box is exactly what I use. So get tying, get practicing, and the results will come, trust me.